morning, gentlemen. Former President Donald Trump surrendered to authorities at the federal courthouse in Miami just before 2 o'clock yesterday. He pled uh, not guilty and left the courthouse roughly two hours later. 37 counts related to more than 100 classified documents recovered from his Mar-a-Lago estate in August. Uh, the subject of uh, these counts, Bill, uh, there are a lot of folks who are anti-Trump. There are a lot of folks who are pro-Trump. And depending on which side of that you sit is oftentimes whether you feel that he's being treated fairly or unfairly in this situation. I'm not asking you about politics. I know you were a, a Trump employee as a, a Trump appointee, I should say, as uh, the Northern Attorney, uh, as the attorney for the Northern U.S. Attorney for the Northern District. Uh, I'm asking about process here. I'm leaving the politics out of this. Uh, and if you could explain to us the process that's going on uh, and why these are serious charges and why. President Trump, for instance, is the subject of these charges and not others at this time who've also been identified as having classified documents in their possession. Well, that's a mouthful, Rob. Uh, I got 25 minutes to fill, maybe, so <laughs> <laughs> chew it up and spit it back out. Well, uh, I don't talk politics but about uh, pretty much anything, even as U.S. attorney, uh, people who knew how I worked knew I was pretty apolitical. Um, uh, I never. That was never a consideration in any, anything we did. But um, with respect to this, the process. Uh, we'll just start with yesterday. This is a, you know a fairly straightforward arraignment. Uh, he comes. Uh, uh, President Trump comes in. He's read the charges, or he waves the reading, which I expect he did because nobody wants to hear, you know, 44 pages of indictment being read in open court. Um, he um, enters a plea, guilty, not guilty. Um, consideration of bond is set. He was released on his own recognizance, which is typical um, in white-collar matters, and it happens all the time for normal Joes and Janes that um, are indicted on similar charges or um, white-collar type stuff. He's not a danger to the community, um, you know, according to the standard, and, and an unlike, unlikely, unlikely flight risk. So those are the two standards determining about bond. Uh, and then, presumably, in, in, at least in the Northern District, dates would be set. But I understand that dates really weren't set here for you know future motions to be filed and, and appearances and a trial date, uh, et cetera. Um, I also understand that although typically after an arraignment, your process that is fingerprinted and uh, mugshot taken by the marshals. In this case, there was no uh, mugshot or fingerprints taken, uh, as I as I understand it. Looked at the at the news. Um, so uh, I'll try to get to all of this, but I read the indictment. It's a speaking indictment, what I would kind of refer to as a speaking indictment. It's not like your typical circuit court of Berkeley County indictment or other state court indictments where basically you're just named and the elements of the charge are identified and, and you're charged with doing some particular act that violated that, and that's the end of it, you know, one or two pages at most generally for, for those types of indictments, this is, as I said significant number of pages detailing a bunch of facts facts that uh, go on that went into deciding about charges and then the various counts are, are laid out that's fairly typical in these kinds of cases wasn't anything particularly unusual um, you've seen that uh, you see that quite a bit in, in particularly in these complicated cases um, with respect I mean I've never prosecuted a you know, with willful retention of uh, national defense documents or information, um, I've certainly prosecuted conspiracy cases, and, and obstruction cases aren't that uh, unusual. So I can probably speak to those more specifically. But um, I, I will tell you that from a from a having been through the process, you get to see top secret stuff, and you have security clearance, and it, it, it's a pretty serious process. Not even, not only coming into that job, but then leaving the job, whatever you're, whenever you're going to have that kind of um, access. Um, you get it debriefed, and you're you're pretty well expected to turn stuff back over, make sure you don't leave with anything, and you get all kinds of warnings and and uh, documents you have to sign saying you did everything you're supposed to do, et cetera. They did it with me. Um, they did it with every U.S. attorney that left, and they've done it with every U.S. attorney since. And they do it with lots of other people that have classified uh, classified categories um, in their background. So, I guess that's the initial background. What's the Give me a specific now question as to what you'd like to talk about. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead Bill. Yeah, I have one, uh, Bill. Uh, I think 31 of the charges fell under the Espionage Act, but everybody knows that President Trump 
is not a spy. He did not give out uh, classified information to an enemy. Why, uh, is, why is, does the Espionage Act apply in this case? Well, the Espionage Act, is, despite its name, covers, encompasses lots of stuff, including this kinds of things. Uh, that is, you know, withholding, um, harboring, or con- uh, concealing um, um, documents that are top secret. I mean, uh, spies. Um, and this is not a spy case, as you point out, but spies, one of the things they do, obviously, is sneak off with documents and or uh, other information, uh, conceal it, um, hide it, shouldn't have it, um, and that's part of the pro- that's part of the, um, the criminal act that, that's being charged. Now, they may also spy. They may also be turning over those documents to foreign entities or others, and that would be separate. those would be separate charges under the act. Um, but certainly part of the act would be, uh, you know, a willful retention that improper retention, concealment, withholding, and those kinds of words that relate to those kinds of uh, top secret documents. As a lawyer, uh, and you've you've read the indictment uh, and taken politics out of it, uh, do you view these as serious, serious charges? I know that the uh, previous Attorney General uh, Bill Barr said he felt they, after reading them, he, fe- he was struck with how serious he felt they were. Do you share that feeling against and out of politics? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that um, keep in mind, and you know, again, it's, this is not a political statement. I've said this with every case, and that is these are charges. They're not, um, they're, they're not evidence. Um, and, you know, the, the government's going to be put to task to, to prove um, what they have. Obviously, I think the most damning stuff in there is uh, the stuff related to attorney-client um, communications, as well as an audio communication that the president is alleged to have had with this author um, regarding um, some of these matters. And the transcripts, you know, at least portions of what was said and what wasn't said, was was contained in the indictment. And those are, um, or certainly reading them, were significant. Um, quite frankly, astounding, if in fact true. Uh, so uh, that would be, that, that's the stuff that um, um, really opened my eyes or, or kind of caught my attention as I, as I read through it. Because the fact of the matter is, people occasionally uh, will, out of um, uh, negligence or just oversight, have things they shouldn't have and take them with them, and they're discovered, and then you just turn them back in. It's not a crime. I mean, you're not going to be charged. It happens. Um, you know, negligent acts or, or, or carelessness is not going to generally be charged criminally. Uh, you get a slap on the wrist and um, told to turn this stuff back in, everything's, and everything could go about their merry way. But once, if, you, if in fact you know you have documents and then you try to conceal them or uh, withhold them intentionally, that we become, we're in a different ballpark at that point. Uh, Bill, hi, this is John Doyle. Uh, related to that, uh, can you speculate on why it was that uh, the uh, that uh, Jack Smith chose to charge under the Espionage Act as opposed to under the Presidential Records Act, or or as opposed to, or maybe you know, charge under both acts? That, that's a good question, and I don't know the answer. I'm not familiar with enough with the Presidential Records Act to know the difference. I think that. Um, one, maybe it just have fit better, maybe it just fit the evidence better. Um, the penalty might be different um, with, respect, with respect to those acts. Um, you know, prosecutors have a lot of discretion on, on which charges to, um, uh, to offer up to a grand jury um, in many cases. You know, some have, you have dual possibilities, you know, multiple different things could fit, but because of the nature of the evidence, uh, the nature of the testimony that you expect, the nature of the penalty, uh, all of those things go into deciding, okay, what are we going to charge, this or that? And I don't know what Mr. Smith did. Um, he's got a fairly uh, pretty stellar reputation, um, and I expect that there was a lot of discussion about how they were going to charge it. The seriousness of this uh, bill not only has to do with possession, but obstruction uh, charges that are uh, also included in this. So had... President Trump just turned these documents over as soon as they were requested, as opposed to the delaying tactics and, and the, hence the obstruction charge. Would this be as serious as it is now? I don't think he would have been charged. I, I mean, if they, 
if he had the documents and they asked about them and, and he said, yep, I have them. I didn't thought I should have them. I thought I could have them. But if you say I can't, then here they are and turn them in. I don't think there would have ever been a criminal case. Um, uh, obstruction's serious business. You know, the, the, it, it's been, that, that law has been in effect for a long time. And, you know, I've kind of like, I've told people many times that it's, it's, sometimes the more serious thing is not the crime, but the lying about it. And, um, uh, you know, subpoenas from grand juries and, um, 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 witness tampering or, you know, those kinds of things that affect an investigation are serious business and, um, they're taken seriously. So the we're going to be charged. The charges include willful retention of national defense information and conspiracy to obstruct justice. So we get the willful retention part, refusing to turn over. Conspiracy to obstruct justice implies that there's more than one person involved in making sure the documents aren't turned over. Does that elevate this to where we are now, that word conspiracy? No, because conspiracy has always involved more than one person. Um, I expect his co-defendant is one of the co-conspirators. I think he's named as one of the co-conspirators, this, this Nata person. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, uh, there can also be unnamed co-conspirators that may or may not be named in the indictment. Um, uh, so, you know, I have to wait for a full rendition of what the evidence is. could be a lawyer um, or two uh, associated with that. Um, to, um, you know, there's an agreement to do something that they know to be improper or illegal, and any of those scenarios could could happen. Yeah, Walt, not uh, the name you're looking for there. Bill, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Bill, I'm going to skate a little bit down the uh, political route. Uh, the Republicans have, have invoked Hillary Clinton and the actions she took. Uh, what are the difference, differences between what Clinton did and what Trump has done? Okay. Um, there are two other, at least three other scenarios that has been talked about recently that involve the same types of things. Uh, President Biden, uh, Hillary Clinton, and former Vice President Pence. Um, the Clinton stuff, um, I'll be honest with you, obviously I have no access to what was evidence was in that case. All I can say is that we all remember FBI agent Comey who got up and did a press conference on the whole thing, which was beyond the pale. I never could believe that that could happen, but he did. Um, and, you know, reading everything I've read about it, you know, Hillary Clinton, she probably should have been charged under the standard. Um, the um, there's, there's a lot of stuff. There was stuff deleted. There was um, – it was clearly national security stuff. Um, and um, – you know, the, the extreme, I think the term that Comey used, what it was um, extreme carelessness as opposed to, um, you know, willful, you know, that's always something that um, folks have trouble dealing with and trying to determine. Um, that one's a closer call, um, in my view. And now Biden, uh, that's being investigated still. My uh, One of my former colleague, U.S. Attorneys Rob Herr out of Maryland, has been appointed as special counsel to deal with um, those documents that were found at um, President Biden's home. I think it was in his garage. Um, um, and, and they're going to make some determination about that. And then Vice President Prince, he's already been cleared. And he was he, I, he probably was a good example of um, he inadvertently had stuff at home, nothing particularly um, dangerous, was asked about it, found it um, um, on his own, and then turned it over. And that was the end of it. Um, yeah. So wasn't obstructive, wasn't anything like that. So that's a uh, that that that's something else in the um, uh, that can be looked at. Yeah, I I understand the the Pence and the Biden, and that uh, you addressed that earlier when you said the problem was willfully possession after they after they discovered it. the Hillary Clinton though was a different issue as I understand it there was some deliberate trying to destruction of of evidence and this is where I think in my view becomes a little bit more confusing and how does that relate to the President Trump issue I can't tell you Bill only because I, I have to you know you really have to get in the weeds on on those things as to why it was done um, I understand the I understand the debate going on. If why wasn't if she was wasn't prosecuted, why is President Trump being prosecuted for basically essentially the same thing? Although we can argue about the details, um, and I can't I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I I generally think it's bad practice to say, 
well, if one person's not prosecuted for something, it can never it can never be prosecuted again, or no one else can be ever be prosecuted for it. That's that's not a standard. I think we can we can accept. Um, people, you know, charges are rendered or charges aren't, and decisions are made. Um, that whole Comey thing with you know the Steele dossier and, and all the other stuff that was going on there was um, uh, significant. Um, I'm sure the FBI's had better better. Uh, better days than they have in the last few years, um, but um, I don't know. The, I really don't know the answer as to um, why Clinton wasn't handled differently. Bill, uh, this is John Doyle again. If, if I might throw something out, I am not a lawyer, but the one time in my life that I got to play a lawyer uh, was uh, in college, and a a an acquaintance of mine. She wasn't really a friend, but an, not an enemy, just an acquaintance was got into some trouble and was hauled up before the student court and she asked me to be her attorney before the student court and i said okay so we sat down and said okay what's the deal here and and i don't remember exactly what the charge was but she said oh yeah i did it i did it but so and so and so and so did the same thing and they and she never got prosecuted and i said that's it i said yeah i said okay uh, that's what we'll have to go with. So we went in front of this five-member student court, you know, all college students, undergraduates, and I made that argument, and I got, I got voted down five to nothing. They basically said, no, John, <laughs> if your client did this, your client is guilty, we don't care who else might, might, have, might have gotten off Scott 3 with doing the same thing. So I've always remembered that. I hope you got a good feed for that service john um, <laughs> the um I, I will tell you that from in my experience that this happens more than people understand and that is that some places are charged some think times the exact same kind of conduct is charged one place and not charged another it happens perfect example of that is an irs case I handle a lot of them. I've defended a lot of them, and that is that you know you got a fifty thousand dollar or tax bill uh, in West Virginia that um, it, it was you know fraud. It was it's a it's a criminal violation. Um, it's going it, to it, there's a decent chance that's going to get prosecuted. Fifty thousand dollars. Let me tell you something. This happened in New York in a fifty thousand dollar tax bill. It won't even get sniffed. It won't be touched. So. It's just that sometimes it's the nature of, 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 of the office, it's the nature of you know, the attitudes, it's, it's the priorities, it's all kinds of things that go into those decisions. Is it right? No. Um, not in my view. It should be prosecuted. But the, um, it happens. Bill Powell is our guest, former U.S. attorney. He was a President Trump appointee during his administration and uh, currently a lawyer for Steptoe and Johnson. Bill, President Trump's defense on, on these uh, issues, besides the, uh, well, no one else got prosecuted for it, has been, uh, one, I own these documents, and, uh, and the other one was, is I, de I declassified these documents. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if, the, if that's accurate, but if it is, does that stand up? Kind of depends if you agree, uh, believe what's in the indictment or not. If you believe what's in the indictment, then he's done. I mean, that's then he's you know he's got a problem. But this, I think it was in mid indictment they talk about the, they have the audio clip where he's he's alleged to have said, "I could have declassified these, but now I can't." The fact it's still speak, secret, though. Yeah, the fact the, speak, so, before you before you go yeah. down that road, though, Bill, if if they were declassified, is the president allowed to declassify classified documents and then take them home and possess them? No, I mean generally, no. I don't believe so. That's that's still just because you declassify them doesn't make them yours. Right. No. They're, I mean, it, that, it's uh, they may, it may they may fall into a different category. They're they're no longer. Um, you know, top secret. Maybe they're you know confidential or you know some kind of step down uh, situation. But no, it's you, know, you still don't get the yeah. I don't get to keep them. I don't get to keep the launch codes even because I declassify them and bring them home with me. Yeah, both classification and declassification is a formal uh, process, and one person does not say I declassified. Now uh, the president has the final word, but. If you disclassified the piece of paper in your hand, there's probably a thousand other same pieces of paper in a thousand other people's hands. Therefore, you have to have a formal process so everybody recognizes the time that a 
what had been a confidential document is no longer a confidential, confidential document. So in other words, there's a process which what, that more than just saying, I declassified. And, and, and Rob and Bill, this is why I brought up the Presidential Records Act. It is the Presidential Records Act that established that any document that, that is in the White House is the property of the U.S. government even even if it's not classified at all and when the president leaves the white house uh, the president is not permitted to say this document is mine uh, because it is it is deemed to be the property of the government now this sets up a negotiation between the president and i think it's the archives and the archives says okay here are some documents that we think it's okay for you to take with you and and they and they tell the, the the outgoing president what they are, but the others have to stay there, and and it's many of many some of the documents that were found at Vice President Pence's house and at Joe Biden's uh, house and also at his uh, at his uh, ex ex Vice President's office there in Georgetown were, were not classified at all, but they're still the property of the government. And that's why I was wondering why uh, 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 Jack Smith didn't also include the Presidential Records Act in here just to establish that these are the property of the government. Bill, thoughts? Yeah, and I don't know. Again, I don't, I'm not sure the answer to that, why the, the ultimate decision was made not to do that. It may have been because of some of the potential defenses associated with that act. Um, uh, maybe we give... Uh, um, President Trump more uh, room to maneuver from a defense standpoint. Um, any number of things could could have ultimately turned the turned the tide on what decision was made. Any final questions for Bill Powell? Yeah, Bill, are you going to run for office again? Never. Uh, I won't. No, I will never run. That's that's a disappointment because you you had so much to the uh, to the public arena. Well, I appreciate that, and, and uh, I, it, I loved my time d- during my service. But the uh, I think you have to have a certain personality and, and uh, um, uh, drive to, to be in to run for run for office some people have it I'm not one of those people so it's just uh, um, just one of the things you kind of as Clintus would as Clintus was said man has to know his limitations That's right. man's <laughs> got to know his limitations uh, Bill yeah. you, you had uh, what probably isn't all that unique in the political uh, pointy world but uh, to the average Joe uh, you were you replaced the man who ultimately replaced you. Do you maintain any kind of relationship with Bill Elenfeld? Uh No, we we haven't we haven't chatted. We you know I always sent him a congratulatory message um, after he got on. Um, the uh, and he you know, he and I have spoken obviously a few times, but uh, I'm kind of it's one of those kind of unwritten rule. Really, you kind of stay out of the man's business when he's doing his job because we all know what the job was and how hard it was and and the like. I still have lots of friends there in that office. Uh, you know I did a. Uh, it, it is without a doubt the best legal job you could have, in my view. Um, and I think, as, as reflected by him wanting the job again, is reflected by Mr. Elenfeld's desire to have it again. And I, you know, I certainly understand that feeling. So, if you were, if, if there is an administrative change uh, in the near future, would you reconsider another appointment to the position? There, well, yeah. I mean, I, there's no question that 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 job is hell holds very dear and near my heart love the people there we did a lot of good work and and uh obviously if i got to serve in that position again down the road that would be great although i'm getting up and i'm not quite as old as uh as mr stubblefield but, uh, <laughs> nobody is bill but a few people a few people are I think, at this point. i'm almost as old <laughs> um, so i think I'm, i think i'm getting a lot closer to retirement than another uh, another job like that so bill thanks so much for your time this morning i appreciate your detail Hey, no problem, guys. Talk talk to you later. Thanks, Bill. Thanks.